239 vids, 26 million views, 236,000 subs in one year, the very first year of this new indie channel. Thank you so much to all of you for all of your support and just wait till you get a load of year two. Sponsored by Skillshare. Now, yes, it's true. I'm still using an Intel Mac, an Intel 16 inch MacBook Pro to be exact. And no, it is not because I hate myself or because I just need the thermals to stay warm in winter. And it's not because of Intel's hyper cringe, hyper self-destructive attack ads, which they immediately confusingly followed up by just the worst, I hate you don't leave me for Apple's foundry business, while also admitting their seven nanometer process is still just years away and then wanting to do away with nanometer measurements entirely while I'm assuming Apple isn't even wasting a second on wicked side eye as they prepare to go all in on three nanometer or who the Hank Pym knows anymore, subatomic with Taiwan Semiconductor. And not because I don't love M1 Max, I do. I all caps love them. They have absolutely industry leading performance in the very first models, the ultra low power models. And when you count in performance per watt, power efficiency, there is just nothing else that even comes close. And it's not all that, it's not the battery life, it's the quality of life. Everything is just instant, like iPad instant, utterly responsive. And when you combine all that with the performance where I can render video as fast as I can render it on a much bigger Intel box and with the battery life, where I can go not just twice as long, but three times as long with the M1 as I could with any of the Intel boxes, it's legit hard to imagine what would keep me on an Intel Mac at this point. But of course I don't have to imagine it because I still feel it, I still live with it every day. And it's like three or four things that just prevent me from making the quantum leap, the warp space leap to M1 just yet. And the first thing is display size. I basically live in Final Cut Pro all day, every day, making these videos. And Final Cut Pro, it just behooves you to have the biggest display you can possibly have. Not just so that you have the biggest view of the video you're editing, but so that you have all the space for the additional toolbars and timelines and everything that goes along with it. And 13 inches there still feels just a little bit cramped for me. So I'd much rather work on, well, I'd much rather work on an iMac, on a giant current 27 inch iMac or some theoretical future 32 inch iMac. But for a MacBook, the 16 inch is just a much better size for me. Same with the RAM. The M1 Macs currently only go to eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. And thanks to unified memory, they're really, really efficient. It's not like eight gigabytes is the new 16 gigabytes. There are still really, really hard RAM limits. And if you're doing any sort of multitasking, just heavy workload, you should absolutely still get 16 gigabytes of RAM, but I need more than that because I'm often doing multiple, multiple apps and multiple heavy workloads at the same time. And I really feel most comfortable right now with 32 gigabytes, maybe even 64 gigabytes, just to future proof as much as I possibly can. And then there's SSD size. And I know for some people that's totally not a factor. Like, at all, they just get the minimum that they need for their boot volume and for their base level storage, their apps, things like that. And everything else, they just hang off the back with either low cost, high volume storage or high cost, high speed storage. And I have that, I have all the hard drives. I have the USB-C hard drives, I have the Thunderbolt 3 hard drives, but all other things being equal, I don't wanna create that additional dependency, that additional point of failure, especially before the world started ending and hopefully after the world stops ending and I'm traveling again, I don't wanna to have to rely on those cords coming loose when I'm trying to work on a video. And unfortunately the current M1 Macs top out at two terabytes where the theoretical M1X MacBooks that'll be coming next will go to four terabytes for the 13 or 14 inch and hopefully eight terabytes again for the 16 inch. And lastly, and probably most critical to me now, the current M1 MacBooks just don't have enough ports. They're limited to two USB 3 ports, which are hybrid USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, and they're really, really fast. They're on board, they're in the M1 chipset, but there is still only two of them. So for example, anytime I do a live stream, like I did back to back this Tuesday, where I did Luria Petrucci show first, and then I did Mac Break Weekly, I have to connect power, which is one port. Then luckily I have the microphone going into the camera and the camera going into a switch. So that's just one port. Otherwise I'd need two. I'd need a cable just for the microphone and just for the camera. Then I have ethernet because you know, like the matrix, you have to use a hard line. I'm just never gonna trust streaming to Wi-Fi. 
and that's a third port. And yes, I'm totally aware I could use a hub, but that again introduces even more gear, even more points of potential failure, even more points of potential interference. And I always wanna keep setups for mission critical stuff as absolutely simple as possible. And that means plugging all the things right into the one machine. And I just can't do that yet with an M1 Mac. And Apple absolutely 100% still knows that, which is why they're still selling the Intel version of the Mac mini and the MacBook Pro and not just selling them, but continuing to support them despite all of Intel's shenaniganization on the side. But believe me, the minute, the nivetally or hot minute that Apple announces an M1X 16 inch MacBook Pro, Thanos snap design or not, I am going to do that maxing out, that max booking out, and then just ride it like a silver surfboard or like a space gray surfboard, dare I hope a matte black surfboard, straight into the second year of this channel and to up my game with things like Marquez Brownlee's new Skillshare course. But yeah, no, it's, it's shot in our studio. It's shot, it's, we literally use a lot of footage and examples of the Galaxy S21 Ultra review that we made earlier this year. So we shot a bunch of behind the scenes and saved a bunch of that footage and kept the archive of the actual project so I can go through and like literally show you why I made certain edits, how I analyzed some of the analytics from the video after the fact. It's just kind of all there. Because that's the true power of Skillshare. It isn't just one class, even several classes. It's an online learning community that offers real membership with real meaning and with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. And you can learn design, illustration, photography, video, freelancing, and more with real projects to create and the support of real fellow creatives. More than 7 million of us learning with Skillshare. With over 2,000 hours, 2,000 hours of classes taken already by those of you watching this channel. And to get in on this, the next 1,000 of you who click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, totally free. So act now and start learning today. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For more, much more Apple's upcoming Macs, hit up the playlist above. I've got everything on the MacBook Pros, iMacs, Mac Pro, everything coming up. So hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.